Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Life. In this episode, I'll be sharing with you my experiment that I'm currently doing using Blender and three different apps of iPhone. So, first of all, um, I'm gonna show you. This is kind of like the final result, but this is uh, actually um, I'm just using an app called Camtrack AR. I probably have been showing you this at some point. Um, so it's capturing a footage at around 2K. And on top of that, it's also um, kind of capturing the motion, the camera motions. So I could easily simply load um, the file using their add-on. And then it will create the camera for you with all the image. Um, and then with the camera tracking, like you can see here, AR camera. And all this animation is already done for you. And all you need to do is just placing your 3D objects um, in front of the camera and you, you have you have something that's kind of like an AR it is actually like an AR because it's an extra layer of uh, visual an augmented visual that you can simply overlay on top of what you see right but this is not real time but you can do it easily in real time so if I'm actually if I really want I can simply export uh, the monkey head and as USDZ or AR and put it back into my iPhone or iPad and I can walk around the same area and it's exactly what it is um, on top of that so that's uh, that's cam track AR that's doing the camera tracking and then on top of that I al uh, I'm also already doing a scan I'm using an app called polycam AI they are there are many apps that allows you to 3D scan and um, using your iPhone LiDAR or iPad LiDAR and one of my favorite is Polycom AI so what I did here I imported the OBJ result from Polycom this is one to one scale and so it comes pretty clean um, from the iPhone and it's pretty high res okay so and then this one comes with uh, multiple materials um, that you can you can adjust. In this case, I simply place this object as close as possible to the to the to the camera motion. So I was hoping that I can get something that's also kind of interesting because in this case we have some some kind of collision, right? I can put Susan underneath and it will collide with the floor. Okay, let's uh, let's go back to the camera first of all before I go too far. Suzanne. And I can drop it down so it's colliding with the camera. Now we have we have some kind of horror scene here. Look. Um occlusion objects in AR is always kind of interesting, I found. Um it's not something that's uh, come by default um, with Apple AR USDZ, but you can you can create an app that does this for you. So you can see um, this is something that I've done only just a couple of minutes. I just did it very very quickly, just not long ago. Like, and I it took me few minutes just to capture this scene and. The whole thing is captured even though i mean the mesh is not perfect because i was doing it a little bit fast i can make it a little bit better however we have this scene now oh, where's the other susan head oh hiding behind the wall i can make it appear now see the collision actually really give a lot of um realism and also of course the shadow so now I have, I have this scene that I can play back this is probably um, something that I can use together with the, with the, the footage okay my alignment is probably not 100% perfect but you get the idea I can use this as collisions with maybe like fluid or dynamics so I can Maybe I can make like the bouncing balls or I don't know, all kind of dynamics. 
um, you can basically see the whole scene as well so this is you can see the emergency stairs all the way to the emergency doors pretty cool right so that's the scan using polycam AI on top of that I also took point cloud so point cloud is interesting this is only 10% of the original actually only 5% because I have full percent hundred percent is almost like a like a photograph kind of because it's not displaying all the resolutions but it's a it's pretty cool to be able to see this as point cloud and maybe this can help me to align if I turn on alpha and start moving this thing I can I can align this point cloud better with the original footage that I took using Camtrack AR but anyway that's uh, it's kind of okay pretty close with the AR camera I can turn off the background now let's just go into let's just fly through you can see it's almost like a dream like so this is the point cloud and imagine if the the points is kind of interacting with you it's sometimes point cloud is enough you know you don't need all the resolution and details it feels like a dream in fact maybe if you're if you send this to your friend maybe okay it's it's almost like being there so now let me show you again this is the one where i have the room scanned using polycom ai Oh yeah, with the point cloud, I'm using an app called Sidescape. There's also another app called Every Point. They're pretty. They both are pretty good, so I have to mention them. Okay, this is Suzanne with ambient occlusion turned on. This is supposed to be at 60 frames per second. Pretty slow. Maybe it's uh, loading the video. Okay, yeah, you got the idea. This is kind of like what I, I want to show you. I'm gonna show you now the just the, the quick process. Okay, so I already have the add-on to import the Camtrack AR. So it's called. Cool. This is actually if you use the app. You're gonna get this add-on that you can install for Blender. So this is Heat Film AR. This is the Camtrack AR. So you have this HFCS file import. So I, I'm gonna do that exactly. Heat Film import. Go under downloads. Grab the latest one. So it gives you a camera and now you can jump into the cameras jump into active cameras select the cameras select this turn on background image add image movie clip open so i do this a um, couple of times now i can do this a little bit fast so this is the oh okay this is actually 30 frame per second okay it's a bit lighter like that. Okay, this is the alpha. So we have this. This is contract AR, like I showed you earlier. So we have the camera, we don't have anything in the scene, right? So we don't have in order to see something maybe so we have our footage is five six nine frames. Maybe I want to turn on motion path. Okay, click here, we get 569, okay, calculate, done. Now we have this line. We don't need to have the numbers being displayed, just look at the line and the dots. We can customize the color. So that's very nice. That's me holding the iPhone, looking at the door, and then I move backward, and then I rotate. 
and then I go up the stair a little bit okay so if you look at the result um, click on the camera so now we are inside the scene so at this point if you really want also you can create the floor inside blender so you don't need to 3d scan it but i think 3d scan is a good and really fast way to get the reference you can you can perhaps replace the bike using 3d assets from sketchfab you know you can completely recreate the space however the, the camera is there the camera moves slightly um, time to time i found that um, if I put like the monkey head over there, things can be kind of wobbly. I mean, the cam track AR is not perfect at the moment, but I think it's gonna improve over time. So, so what I'm doing with the monkey, I'm gonna put it on the floor. So we can always tell the floor is over here on the on the grid. Okay, so I just put the monkey head over there, subdivide it. And smoothing give it some nice material okay metallic Susan always if I want to uh, to this to do this properly I will probably will take tr like 360 panorama using a 360 camera to get the environment map to work to work with uh, Susan render Okay, now it's going up the stair. I can put another Suzanne there. So that's basically what I'm, what I was doing. And the point cloud and the OBJ scan is, like I said, is I'm using an app called Polycam, Polycam AI on the iPhone. Um, it's also a paid app. CamTrack AI is also a paid app. Um, I have, I know there are some apps that allows you to scan for free, but these guys are pretty good. So I, I really think the, the iPhone today, especially iPhone Pro, I, I, iPhone 12 Pro, really give you the, like, uh, it will unlock a lot of things for you if you are doing like a indie, independent filmmaker. I, I don't, I haven't done like a real production quality movie yet, but it's really helpful. This is me going up the stair a little bit. This is me looking at the entrance. If I want to properly match it, probably I select the texture uh, material and turn on alpha blend and try to play with the alpha so I can see what's behind what's behind the screen and try to match the original footage with the mesh. This one is actually not too bad. Yeah, it's probably pretty close. See now, I'm replacing the original footage with with this uh, 3D scan. Turn off, delete the motion path. And I can turn on ambient occlusion. So we have a bit of shadow. If, if I put Suzanne near the floor, let's make it floating. If I really want, I can actually change the, uh, the lighting. So I haven't tried it. So this is stair footage. It doesn't have light yet, but I can turn on the light. I'm gonna put point light. Give it a color. Probably it will change the color of this. Ah, okay. Completely change the mood. I can make this world 
pretty dark. Now we are inside a horror horror game of some sort. Okay, maybe need more realistic uh, material on Suzanne. Okay. Change the roughness. Okay, maybe. Yeah. I like this with a with a different lighting. It feels it changes the mood. Going up the stair. So yeah, it's working quite well, I guess. Maybe next time I'll I'll make a I'll, I just make a movie, you know, Don't, not just testing things out. But I enjoy, I enjoy doing like a capture motion tracking, and then, um, yeah. On top of this, the iPhone of course capture the facial animations, and also it can do a little bit of motion capture using the back camera. So it's quite a full on, uh, full on tools if you really, really want to play with it. Um, I'm using Blender two point. 93 and I believe this one doesn't have a proper lighting or or maybe I need to use cycles currently I'm using EV real-time EV that's why it's uh, the lighting is a bit funny yeah it's okay But I think even with this kind of scan, you know, like a, a little bit messy, but the scan, if I do it properly, it can look um, pretty good and enough for kind of like a quick game or experience. So this is the footage. Maybe I'll share it with you. Um, what else I want to say? So yeah, three different apps I use, CamTrack AR so, and then Polycam for uh, this 3D scan and also the Point Cloud one I'm using Sidescape. Uh, Point Cloud can give you a dreamy look, so Point Cloud can be useful if you don't want to give all the details. So this one gives you a lot of realism. You can completely change the camera as well, right? So. We can we can delete the camera because the camera gives you the movement, but in in actuality you can you can just fly. You can fly and make a new camera. So F three walk few navigation walk or fly and start flying or walking through the scene. Kind of nice. So scanning the iPhone twelve, not too bad. It's really, um, it's really like a professional tools if you want to do like a indie filmmaking. Okay, so that's probably it for this demo. In the future, I will try to do this again. Hopefully, cam track AR in, um, tracking will improve. But I'm pretty happy with this. Um, hopefully, you you get inspired and try to do this yourself. So thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.